If you've ever wondered which carnivorous plant eats the most food, it's these guys, Saracenias. These guys literally eat food constantly, non-stop, and more, like in terms of volume, they eat way more than any other carnivorous plant. Generally, when people think of carnivorous plants, they think of Venus flytraps, and obviously they are the only ones that people think that can eat a lot of bugs. But the truth is, that's not actually what happens. You see, a Venus flytrap like this one here only has 12 mouths. And even though, like I just saw about 10 minutes ago, they do catch insects. I'll, let me just show you guys the clip I saw. And this trap right here just caught a fly. Crazy. I have not seen our plants do so well, like in terms of catching food so regularly until I've moved them to the back. They're always eating, guys. It's, it's honestly, it's really good for them. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they're happy back here. And as you guys can tell, they obviously do catch flies, but there's only 12 opportunities in this plant here to catch flies or any type of insect for that matter. Now, some people might know about sun juice. Like these ones here, sun juice. They have these sticky leaves and the sticky leaves close over some insects when they land on them. And they are attracted to the glistening little dew droplets, which is where they get their, num their name sun juice from. So people might think that maybe these guys catch a little bit more, which is true compared to a Venus flytrap. But when compared to a Saracenia, it's really like next to nothing. Once again, they can only catch as many flies as there are traps on one of these sun juice. Because when it does catch a fly, the whole trap wraps around the fly, like that one right there. So as you guys can tell, there is really not many insects that can be caught by a Venus fly trap or a sun dew, or you know, quite a few different carnivorous plants for that matter. But the one carnivorous plant that always consistently catches literally hundreds of insects is one of two the saracenia like this one over here or like what we have in the background the nepenthes now saracenias are actually even more efficient i think than the nepenthes because these guys are always out in the sun and that's where the flies are the flies like the sun and they go to the nectar on these traps and they you know eat the nectar and they fall inside but i'll talk a little bit more about that later um, so I think that these guys catch way more insects than those guys at the back. So it is pretty interesting to know that these specific plants actually catch the most amount of insects when people would otherwise think that it is something like a Venus flytrap or a sunju, like I just said. Now, as you guys might have seen from that clip I just showed you, these Saracenias actually have like quite a few insects down inside the trap. I can literally see about five from the top of this small trap. That's five, that's nearly half of the amount of traps that there are on the Venus flower trap. And this entire tube from about here to about here, that's full of insects. So maybe there's about 20 to 30 flies inside of this one trap. There's more in this one. There will be more in this one. So there'll be more in this big one coming up here. So you guys can imagine that when we get to some of those big Saracenias that we have on the table, those really tall ones, you can just imagine how full those ones are with insects. Now let's talk about the different types of these Saracenias, these different types of pitcher plants. You get quite a few different species, pure species, and tons and tons of different crosses. This one here is actually a Saracenia flava, but you do get Saracenia leucophila, alata, minor, purpurea, citachina, tons of different types and they all have slightly different shapes, but they do all have the same or similar type of tracking me trapping mechanism. Basically, they have a little hood and a funnel, and the hood ha has point hairs that point downwards and secretes nectar, and you know the funnel has downward pointing hairs as well. So it's kind of like a reticulated teeth of a python, where the food that the snake eats can only go in one direction, can't go out. Same thing with the hairs in these traps. The hairs point downwards, the bugs walk down the trap, 
they can't go backwards because the hairs point down on them and they just continue walking down deeper and deeper into the trap. It's pretty, um, pretty hectic, but yeah, that's how they do it. Now, another very interesting thing about these plants, what makes them so efficient, um, besides them having the nectar and you know being in the sun where all the insects are, um, and the traps and everything is actually the trap shapes and the nectar that they secrete. Now the trap shapes, especially on the ones that stand upright, the trap shapes work in such a way that when an insect tries to fly out of it, so let's say an, an insect has just fallen into this trap, when the bug tries to fly out and flaps its wings, the insect actually can't get any air to push itself up. The air kind of goes around in a circle, so they can't fly up, they just kind of tumble around. So that's a pretty interesting adaptation, I guess, that these guys have evolved to have, in that the insects actually can't fly out, and secondly, they can't climb out because of the hairs, and you know, the inside of these traps have a waxy coating, so it's pretty difficult to actually take, have a little grip if you, have, if you are an insect. Now the next thing about them, like I said, is their nectar. Now, people aren't really too sure about this, but everyone does say the same thing, and I think it's true as well, that the nectar from the Saracenias actually makes the flies kind of drunk. Now, earlier I just recorded a clip of this as well. There was a, a drunk fly that was feeding on one of our Saracenias, and it was just walking along one of the pots and fell into the water because it can't concentrate anymore. Whatever nectar that these plants secrete, it honestly does make the, the insects like drunk and that obviously helps them catch their food. Earlier today, again, because I was standing outside watching my plants for most of the day today, I was watching a fly, not on this specific plant, but one of our other big ones, just eating all the nectar on the top of the lid here. Now, it was getting very drunk and it kept walking down the throats into the pitcher and then walking back out. And that's because the pitcher was sideways. The effect of not getting air under the wings with these plants only really works if the plant is upright, if it's on its side. I don't know why it doesn't really work. But anyway, it kept slipping further and further and further down the trap of the plants because it just couldn't keep a grip. And it was too stupid to you know, think to itself, oh, this is a little bit dangerous. I can't walk properly anymore. And it literally just continued eating its food. And some of the flies, like the one that I just showed you in that clip, fly away, but then they still stay drunk. They can't walk and then they end up falling into the water table and then drowning. And that is how some of the other Saracenias, like Saracenia purpurea work, in that they don't have upright traps, they just kind of lay on the side. But the insect gets so that drunk that it actually slips off of the lid into a pool of acidic enzymes that they have
one. I haven't seen how full that one is, but yeah, you guys can see how efficient they are. But we'll watch this one play out. Yeah, I think the fly's a bit too big for that trap as well. Anyway, you guys get the point of it. These guys catch tons of flies. When the traps get full, what they generally do is that the traps fall over because they get so heavy. All the flies just don't get caught anymore because you can see there, there's so many flies. They just literally just jump off of each other and they fly out. But yeah, these guys are super, super good at attracting and catching insects. And as you can tell there, they're not as good. And that one just got caught by our Crossrocopensis, guys. So this is actually a very interesting video for you guys. I've never seen so many insects get caught so quickly. Anyway, here is the drunk, a drunk fly. Don't know if you guys saw that, but yeah, that fly was drunk. It couldn't fly anymore. But this just kind of summarized everything I was just saying to you perfectly. So yeah. This fly's gonna fall off. Oh, no, it made it worse for itself. Yeah, anyway guys, let's go and look at the other plants. So we're now back at the table at the back of the house and here are all of our different Saracenias that we do have for sale and here are some of the big ones now as you guys know Saracenias attract these type of spiders and I just took a couple clips of these this specific spider so let me play them real quick this fly just landed here and this is why these spiders like the Saracenias because they get food That fly literally landed, I watched it. And now the spider has food. But yeah, he's still eating his fly, as you guys could have seen from earlier. But you can see the different type of Saracenias that we have here. This one here, like I said, Saracenia purpurea. They lay down like that and they have their hairs that point downwards and the bugs fall into the watery pool. Then you get the tall ones like the Saracenia flava I just showed you, the small purple rays. And there's different types that you get, like this. Looks like an, al an alata one day. You get ones like this. This is kind of leucophila. It's a leucophila cross, has the white tops. This is a minor cross because it has the minor heads which kind of falls over like that flops over but then you get obviously some different ones like these this is a type of a rubra see it's red that's another leucophila cross the white lids this is a type of saracenia flava cross and there's tons of bugs in there i'm sure i can try and... oh guys i just dropped the spider i don't know where it went oh no Okay, well, let's see if we can find anything inside of here. No, it's too bent. The issue with these traps, like I was telling you, is that if they bent to the sides, they aren't that efficient because the insects kind of can walk out because of an angle and they, can't, they can easily fly out and stuff. But yeah. These guys are still recovering from when we repotted them a couple of weeks ago, but you can see all the different shapes and looks of them. These are actually the ones that we have been growing from seeds. And here's a drunk fly. Like I say, they just walk around. They don't know where they are. These are some Saracenia flowers that we've been growing from seed. They look really good, nice and red. Good vein on them, good vein coloring. And these are some crosses that we have been growing up. Saracenias all look the same when they're young. This one is actually, this is its second year. These are their first year. So the ones that are about one season old all look the same. 
when they are about two seasons old then they start looking different like these so yeah pretty unique in their growth habit but this fly is still sitting here still drunk and he will stay there these guys are gluttons they genu genuinely eat so much food it's it's honestly insane and yeah they make their flowers too which we'll do a, a video on in the future the fly that we had got free from earlier but yeah guys this is the saracenias and they are eating everything nearby so if you guys want a carnivorous plant that eats tons and tons of flies and insects get a saracenia and if you're living in australia and you want one well look how many i have all for sale and different venus fly traps and different drosera capensis and drosera spatulatus for you guys tons of plants but anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video oh my god i nearly killed myself <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm not in the best mood of, not in the best mood today so don't have much energy but yeah still thought still thought i'd show you guys how interesting the saracenias are anyway see you guys next time